Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about the Convex Tesmic Polar Tensioner 1150. I'm um, going to kind of go over the basic features and parts on here so that you know a little bit of the terminology. Um, we'll start at the beginning of the unit here. Um, we've got a hydraulic jack on here. Um, it's also known as the plow. Um, it's controlled through the HMI, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Um, the front compartment contains your engine. Uh, this particular unit has a tier four diesel engine in it, um, manufactured by Kohler. Um, the battery compartment is also down in here. Uh, next compartment over uh, on the outside you'll see is a box which control or contains our remote control. Um, we'll talk about that also in a little bit. Um, inside of here, um, you'll see our hydraulic system. Um, this particular unit has the ability to go between a high and a low gear. Um, I'll point out the shifter mechanism, which is right here. Um, you can change that up by pulling it out or pulling it out or pushing it in, um, and that'll control the speeds of the bowl wheels. Next, uh, next compartment we've got is where our controller is. Uh, this is our HMI. We will also be going through the HMI here in a little bit. Uh, then the last compartment back here is our auxiliary uh, hydraulic system. Uh, this is where you'll be hooking up any real stands or other items that you have to hook up uh, hydraulically. And then the last thing that's probably hard to see there's an additional jack back here, which is for stabilizing, and that's a manual jack, which uh, is not. All right, as I've walked around to the other side of the machine, I'll point out a couple of the other uh, key features on the machine. Um, when we refer to bull wheels, uh, here's our bull wheels right here. Uh, this particular uh, machine has got one set. Um, some of the other machines will have two sets, uh, three sets, and someday a fourth set. Um, on the bull wheels, there's a rope clamp that will uh, pinch the rope here. Um, it's a hydraulic driven, also controlled through the HMI and the uh, remote, uh, which Andy will show you in a little bit. Um, the rope that we use to start our hard line, um, every machine comes with uh, about 135 feet of it, um, and it's weaved on here, uh, starts on the inside and works its way up, works its way out. Um, all the way around, looped uh, four, four wraps around. You see it all the way down, it comes off the back to here, and then eventually to our real stand, um, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So here is the main operator screen for the HMI. And I'll go through, it, through which each button does here one at a time. Um, the first one is on the top left here, is the mode selector between a puller and tensioner when you're in a high range. Uh, you can pull or tension with this machine. With the arrow pointing towards the captains, that means you are in pulling mode. You push the button again and notice the arrow goes out. That is tensioning mode because you're paying the conductor or the hard line out. The next button down resets our footage counter right now. This is again 948 feet. Push that, it goes to zero instantaneously. The next button down here will shut off any pressure to our real stand. So if we need to operate the machine itself and just to help with reaving or anything like that, or just take up slack, we can shut off the pressure and keep the brake lock on the real winder. Uh, that doesn't get used too much, but sometimes uh, guys will ask what it's for and sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Over here on the top right is uh, the printer screen. Uh, you can record the pulls that you are doing. From here, you can enter in the customer name, the pull you want to use. Um, you can record it on the USB, or actually, it comes with a printer. You can print off the data onto a little uh, ticket. Next, we have our hydraulic functions. Uh, the accessories to the machine, like uh, up in front of the machine, is the front plow. Switch it up. There's a rope clamp attached to the machine as well for uh, uh, blocking any movement for the rope. And then we can manually activate uh, the real winder to whatever pressure we have set by pushing this button here. Next is our uh, settings menu, which basically just describes uh, the oil we have, the weight setting for the oil, which is uh, we use a Hydrex Extreme. 
uh, which has the same characteristics as a 46, but it's suitable for all weather conditions. Um, and then some live data of what different pump pressures are on the machine and the real liner pressure. Here we have our screen settings, uh, what you want to be, if you want to be in uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit, uh, pounds, feet of pressure in miles per hour or feet per second, you can change all that on this, this screen here. Next is the guy with the little wrench. This is our diagnostics page. We can do a bunch of different things from here. Uh, Hold on. Next button down here is our uh, our diagnostics page. We can do lots of different things from this screen. Uh, this little up here, if we have a multiple bowl machine, we can switch the sides of circuits. Um, each of these tell you which circuit is being used and if there's milliamps or millivolts uh, where, where it's at and which solenoid also is being used on that circuit. Um, the next button down is our test port. Uh, we can test the machine against the negative break and at 50 hours, um, that's actually a requirement. It'll show up on the maintenance screen. And then the next one down, we can test the real stand pressure with as well to make sure that that's pulling back as it's supposed to. Um, then on the right, is our uh, maintenance timers page. Uh, we can see how much time is left on each item before it's going to need maintenance. Uh, from changing your gear oil, uh, replace the hydraulic filters, uh, fuel filters, all that is included on this page. You can scroll up and down and see. Uh, the next button down from there is basically live data for the engine. Um, so you can kind of see if anything needs help there as well. Won't get into that too much. Um, and then next we have, this is communications with the remote. Um, it just tells you that if, if the uh, remote is communicating uh, to the machine itself, it tells you where, where it's at as far as percentages uh, for running your joystick and, and your uh, pressures. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is connect the remote to the machine. By doing so, you as well. By doing so, we'll uh, take the remote here, and up right here, we'll turn the remote on. Turn that blue switch ninety degrees to the to the right. We'll get this screen here, and when I push this green button, it'll link, and then it'll show that it's linked by this this uh, icon here. Will turn green. So I'm going to go ahead and push the button. It'll link. Now we can control the machine. Uh, I'm setting my real stand pressure, my pull force pressure. I can control the rope clamp up front. Um, there's an emergency stop, and of course the joystick to pay in it and pay out the machine. So here we have a typical setup, I guess, for a, a real stand and uh, this machine and the tensioning mode to pay off some conductor. Normally we'd have a reel set up on this machine, but to transfer the, the rope or the conductor through. To read the machine with rope, it starts up on the inside coast uh, rear bowl wheel and wraps around to the outside and then exits through the fair lead to the uh, reel stand. Uh, this, this reel stand connects to the hydraulic ports in the back of the machine, which are located right back here. Uh, there's a way to set it up to freewheel. You need to just get a little bit of uh, conductor or hard line off the reel stand. Uh, otherwise, there's a way to set it up for uh, actually running it with the machine, which is what I'll show you next. So this machine right now, the reel stand is set up to be in freewheel mode. Uh, this, hopefully you can see it from the video. This, Black lever here for the selector knob is pulled out, so the spool valve is pushed in. And this selector valve here is 90 degrees parallel with the uh, with the ground. Now to release the brake that's holding this here right now, we need to turn this dial in so it's tight. And this is Jack to break up the hydraulic pressure. Now this will break up the pressure on this gauge, and once it hits about 250 psi, 
is we release the brake in the motor so that we can turn this by hand. So if there's rope on there, you can, you can pull some out by hand. Um, to order to set it back to the machine, we release this brake pressure here to tighten the brake back up. Push this knob in, push this lever back down, and now we're set up to run with the machine again.